Yeah, now I'm now I'm a record. Cool. See, perfect. We get. Ah, I'm doing great. Doing great. <laughs> Enjoyed some time home. Yeah. But um, obviously, I'm also missing uh, our small cycling world a little bit. Yeah, I could imagine. Eh? Maybe for so long, so long at home is not common for for a cyclist. Eh? It's, it's definitely terrible. not common. It has uh, advantages, but also disadvantages. But hey, we are trying to make the most of it. Yeah, for sure. Hey, man, thanks so much for this interview. It was really, really nice to, to talk to you again. And uh, well, the life here, of course, in Berlin, I think start to going back to the new normal. And uh, yeah. but the people, of course, use mask, everything. So it's weird. Fine. Yeah, completely weird times. I think Germany is still a little bit more strict with the rules uh, than Austria. Uh -huh. Like we were pretty lucky here in Austria. We don't we don't need to wear masks anymore for the shops or the restaurants are open. Everything is is going quite normal. I was also lucky enough that I was able to ride outside all the time. You know, yeah, if you cool. think about my my Spanish or Italian teammates, they they really had a hard time. I think. But uh, yeah, for me, everything was quite quite well. Yeah. So, uh, but of course, I missed the races. Yeah, for sure, I could imagine. Well, yeah. I prepare a, a small script here to talk to you. I just made a, some introduction, some information that I got from you on, on internet. Yeah. Marco Haller is an Australian professional cyclist who's 29 years old. With 10 years of profession now, no? Yeah, it's my, my uh, 10th year now uh, in the pros. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So you, you started in Continental Team in Redland, Tirol in 2010. Later moved to Adria Mobil. And between 2000, 2012 until 2019, you was part of the Katusha team. Having partners like uh, Marcel Kittel, Daniel Navarro, Nils Polit, Rick Zabel, Zakarian. And, and others, of course. Uh, since the beginning of this year, you, you moved to Bahrain, né? Team Bahrain McLaren, riding now with Cavendish, uh, Damiano Caruso, Sonny Cobrelli, Ivan Cortina, and Mike uh, Mikel Landa, right? You you already met this guy once? No, no, we met we met already in uh, October in uh, London or ah. near London. We have been at the McLaren headquarters. Ah, cool. Really, really great experience. Uh, we actually started the season off uh, very well. A bit unfortunate uh, that uh, this uh, pandemic... Yeah, completely uh, crazy. Cr crossed, us, crossed, crossed the world. Crossed the world, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> not only cycling. Hey, it's a <laughs> yeah, exactly. worldwide problem, no, no doubt about that. But uh, I think we are on a good way to, to come back and uh, yeah. we stay optimistic. Yeah, for sure. Well, in 2018, you, you told it to Cycling Tips that that year, 2018, was the most demanding start to a season ever because you suffered in that time two viral infections and a serious accident in your, in your knees né? and crack your femur. Oh, my God. But in 2019, you, come, you returned to the bike, you ran the Giro d'Italia, and it was also the year that I debuted as a video reporter. We fate, bo fate brought us face to face because the video become viral, and that I hope everyone here already watched. Right? So, first Wait. of all, I would like to thank you for the very, very much for the interview, and it's, I have to say this is a great pleasure to talk to you again. And I must say that I feel very lucky with the chance to meet you, such as nice, such as a nice guy and a professional cyclist like you, and who always presented himself as a super polite guy. And good people. Thanks. Thanks so much, man. <laughs> I, think, I think we have been very lucky with this video. No, we really got famous in Brazil, no? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, I think not only Brazil. Until nowadays, I received someone tag me because some profile uh, published the video again. And the people yeah. comment again, you know, like, oh, my God, this will never finish. A crazy situation. <laughs> but it's now uh, funny to think back on it. Yeah, for sure. So let's start off. For uh, the, the the question that I prepare here. Well, first of all, I would like to to know if you have a very crazy about cycling when you are in your childhood, and what was the passion of the little Marco in that time? 
in Austria. Look, all, all, all people who ask me that, I give the same answer. And I think I must have been a very annoying kid because my father, he put me in several sport clubs. Like I was, I was playing football and cycling in summer and I was uh, alpine skiing and uh, playing ice hockey in winter. So uh, I had a lot of energy, um, apparently. And uh, I think my dad just uh, wants to give me the opportunity uh, to, to get out my power. Um, and as I got older, I, I obviously had to choose uh, one sport. First, I, 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 I quit uh, alpine skiing and then also football. So it was only cycling in summer and ice hockey in winter. And later on, uh, I just uh, kept going with cycling because what you like the most as a small kid is to win. And I was winning the most in cycling. So I yeah. just, yeah, destiny yeah. brought me to cycling. Yeah, for, very nice. Well, I mentioned about your accident for sure was not a, a good moment. Well, I, I suffered an accident in my bike too. It was oh, really shit. hard to to go back. Well, I lose a little bit the movement of my hand. But uh, of course, you have that that serious accident. And I, I think for sure was really difficult to recover and ride again. How, how difficult you think was that time? What do you remember from the time? What you learn? after that no i Close. think uh, situations like this just um and i think this is pretty a common feeling uh if you talk to any sportsman who got injured like you don't take anything for granted anymore like you you understand again um, what a privilege you have uh, being a professional sportsman and earn your money by by living your passion uh, yeah, it was a severe accident because it, I was off the bike for almost half a year, two months on crutches, and uh, it was certainly a long way back. But uh, the human mind is is crazy because you you forget it pretty quick uh, when you're back in business and uh, you are immediately back at it like uh, like never before. Yeah, maybe it was uh, important experience for me because uh, at that point I was already like seven eight years in uh, in the professional uh, ranks and you you're used to it and you start to complain a little bit maybe lose a little bit of motivation and after that I really understood again how great my life is being a professional cyclist and I think it was like a small restart of my career yeah, and sure. um, yeah, I'm focused of uh, I'm, I'm focused on getting the positive out of it. Yeah, cool. Well, of course, when start this pandemic, yeah, you was in the in the Emirates tour. You was one of the the cyclists that was how many times we stayed out? Almost one month, right? No, I was actually lucky to to get home with my original flight. I think it was only three or four teams. They had to. Uh, keep down uh, in the Emirates, but uh, our team, Baron McLaren, since we had no positive uh, cases of COVID-19, uh, we were allowed to go home uh -huh. um, just three days after they, can they canceled the race. After they canceled the race. Exactly. But, but um, because I remember I talked to you when you was there, and I had a, the feeling that you were you was one of the cyclists that stayed there. I had a, I made this mistake. Obviously, all of the cyclists there were tested, and also the staff and journalists and everything. They could uh, see that there were only positive cases in one level of the hotel, so they kept one level of the hotel uh, there. Uh, these were four teams, so these four teams unfortunately had to stay. I think almost two weeks there. Certainly, a. Uh, uh, a difficult task for them mentally but yeah, um, sure. they said uh, we were lucky that we could yeah. go home well i saw that you made a long trip to vienna during your preparation too uh, after the lockdown how 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 do you, how you maintain the motivation without race without shadows during this period how was how was, how was your, your day and how you how to maintain this motivation it's hard for me here i couldn't imagine for athlete um yeah i I just uh, try to get some uh, challenges for myself. And one of the challenge was, hey, um, I had uh, an appointment with my girlfriend in Vienna. So we were driving out by car and I took my bike with me and I said, why not ride, ride home by bike? It's uh, 320 kilometers and it, and, uh, it took me, uh, how much it took me, like 
10 hours at the end so it was a, a pretty long trip certainly yeah um, but uh, i enjoyed it somehow and uh, it was a great experience yeah and have good mountains around you know for to climb you know? yeah like austria one of the most beautiful countries uh, to ride a bike i'm very sure about that and uh, yeah. what i said before to you like uh, certainly many disadvantages uh, uh, being at home for such a long time but on the other hand um, I could really enjoy our nature and explore yeah. explore my area a little bit and uh, I made the most of it I think great I'm, I'm, I'm planning to go to Switzerland in August in the holidays and I'm planning to to get the to climb the the Furkas fu, fu, Pass Furka Pass yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, see, yeah let's see I'm, I'm a I'm a climber. I like to climb too, but here in Berlin, it's completely flat. Oh my God! Get to be boring, no? Completely. Yeah. No, I start to be happy with 60 meters of mountains. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Also good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm from Rio, so Rio is amazing to ride to. A lot of mountains around, beautiful nature, mm -hmm. but here is completely flat. Well, I saw that you was one of the pre-selected for the to the to the France in August. And how is your training routine in this moment? How how you are, how you are training? Um, well, um, there was obviously a, a part where we just uh, were riding to maintain fitness, but now obviously we are ramping up uh, properly. We know that the cycling season is soon to restart, and um, training got harder, more intense, and. Um, yeah, we're just like preparing like it would be the original start of the season. I feel ready and I can't wait to get it started. You you think, of course, this, maybe these two friends will be one of the most uh, unpredictable to the friends because the preparation of everybody maybe is not, I think, broke completely the, the curve of preparation of the athletes, no? I think we'll be completely... Uh, surprise for everybody you know it would be crazy it's really hard to say how people got through this uh, period of uh, of not racing but to be honest i think at the end of the day there will be the the same contenders uh, for the general classification and uh, maybe one or another will crack sooner or later but uh, just just like every year uh yeah. the best will win most likely yeah well, you told me about the your your family business, né? About the bicycle traveling agency have to well have to close for this for for this moment, né? The bicycle is is part of your lifestyle. Like if you have to buy bread, you go by bike. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, bicycle is just my job. It's actually run more by my father. Like I have technically nothing to do with this project. Mm -hmm. uh, but what they wanted to do with Hala Cycling is to create uh, a pro cycling experience for anybody. Like you could book your cycling holiday and feel this experience of having a, a, a mechanic, a team bus and everything with you. But um, as I mentioned before, and as you said already, like uh, also this pandemic made it uh, incredibly tough for this business and they uh, decided to, to close it for now. Uh, we will see if they can restart uh, uh, this business again. But at the moment, uh, it's yeah. it's not a good time, obviously, because uh, yeah. you need to travel over borders. And at the moment, this is pretty, pretty difficult. And uh, that's why at the moment it's off. Yeah, and no tourists in the world nowadays. Né? So I see in Berlin here, the city always had tourists. And nowadays, completely only for the... For the citizens, in a way, you know, it's yeah. really a strange moment. Well, yeah. this weekend we had the, the virtual, the first virtual to the France. You know? I don't know if you saw some. Uh, it was really, I, I, I saw that you participate for one of the virtual race, right? And well, how do you think will be the, the new normal nowadays? In the, how could you imagine the cyclists will be the a virtual social media become more important than? Then the of course the real race maybe of course not, but you think uh, how this could could change the world of in, the, in cycling how this could be promote maybe the cyclists the the professional the the, the yeah. athletes and what do you think about it? 
Look, I don't think uh, proper a proper cycling can be replaced by virtual racing. It's just not the same. Um, it's great to see the passion and uh, the cycling community getting on board and doing e-racing in a time where where normal races were not possible. And it, it's great um, to uh, communicate and get together virtually when you cannot do it in real. Um, but still, a Tour de France needs the spectators and uh, Paris-Roubaix, San Remo, the Giro. You need to be there. You need to get this experience. You need to feel the cyclists. And uh, it cannot replace uh, real cycling, that's for sure. But as I said, a great, a great way to compensate uh, the, the time where we missed uh, real races. And I think uh, they did good of uh, keeping cycling uh, between us. Yeah. You, you think the, 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 the future events will, be, will become more colder or without so many people, or maybe easier because we don't have, maybe don't have so many journalists or photographers around? Or don't have a, I think I read that they're going to cut the podium girls, for example. What do you think will, will be the race with this? Will you, you receive some, some information how, how some, some things are going to change, in the, specific in the competition? Look, there are so many rumors going on out there uh, that I'm not really participating in, in, in getting my ideas and thoughts into it. Uh, my yeah. job is to be fit and race my bike, and this is what I'm doing at the moment. I'm trying yeah. to stay fit and get in the best possible condition. Yeah. I'm focusing on there are other people out there who, who are thinking and, uh, about this, uh, these problems and these uh, politics but this is not my part yeah for sure i saw that one of our video eric zabo come to you to talk to you and of course i saw that treat you with a hug and with a great af af affection and respect of course and i see i saw that you i know that you you raced with with her his son on katusha and you think it's is is hard to make friends in peloton do you think you in the future you'll be the you, your best friend will be mark cavendish no <laughs> Look, there are <laughs> Kev's a cool guy. I was already sharing room in, in Abu Dhabi with him. And yeah. <laughs> I think uh, it's pretty easy actually to make friends in the Peloton because it's actually cycling, which is uh, connecting us all together. And uh, cycling is the big passion all of us are sharing, like you as a journalist, us yeah. as a writer, uh, organizers, sponsors, why we are all here. Or the reason we are all here is cycling. So we definitely, or we already have one big thing in common. Of course, we are not best friends with everybody, but I think there mm. are almost all of the riders we can uh, we can uh, share a, a chat and and talk a little bit. So sure. um, there are definitely more friends than enemies in the peloton. And <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, uh, do you imagine one day going viral? We're gonna be viral on the internet. How do you feel today after one year of our video on cycling <laughs> trend topics? <laughs> I, I was I was making the joke that uh, this this uh, this internet uh, brought me or this sorry this video brought me more publicity uh, than winning a stage in a Giro. But still, I would rather win a stage in a Giro than uh, make okay. such a video again. But so. uh, no, it was a pretty a pretty funny incident and. Uh, incredible the the coincidence uh, that you were there uh, recording and this guy uh, trying to 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 get the bid in no uh, it's certainly one one of the uh, the stories we will we will tell uh, also in the future no for sure for sure well for me i was there filming was in the was completely i don't know almost 500 meters after the finish line huh? Yeah, and, I, and and just happened in, my, in front of my camera, you know, the the yeah. full video, the full video have twenty three seconds, I guess. Yeah, it was exactly. It was not a long tape. It was just this tape and half in front of me. It was really yeah. crazy, and I, of course, I didn't expect that become viral. <laughs> and I I had a I have to go to the to the bus in the next in the in the tomorrow to talk to him to <laughs> to apologize. <laughs> What was crazy is really, really crazy, and was my first time there. I think it was my 
second, third stage in the, in the race because I arrived in the second, in the second week. It was really, really unbelievable to become viral. For sure, we'll, we'll, we'll be in our memories forever. Definitely. Well, fantastic, Mark. Well, I would like to show you to end what I have here. Ah, great, <laughs> uh, great, great, great. I put here with your name. <laughs> Amazing. So we, we just need to take care that you will will meet us at uh, one of the next races and then we replace the Katyusha cap with one of Bahrain McLaren. Yeah, for sure. Very cool, man. I, 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 I hold his with a lot of passion cool. and, and care. It's here great, in, my, great, in my wall. Great. It's, it's a, good, uh, a good souvenir. <laughs> And with your, your signature was because for me it was really special to be there in Giro d'Italia covering as a for the first time and all of this happened. So it was really crazy and and, and to meet you and it was awesome. fantastic too. I hope uh, we can go back to the race soon. Yeah. And uh, we can we can uh, become happiest with with the world when everything's Going back to the normal will be cool. For now, it's what we have. Really? What we have. Stay positive. Yeah, for sure. You too, man. Thanks so much. It was nice yeah. to talk to you, mate. Great yeah, to see you. Again. And like you said, see you soon at some races. For sure. I hope so. I hope too. Thanks Perfect. so much, man. Bye bye. Enjoy. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Ciao, ciao. ciao.